Welcome back Welcome. Um, to EUTV. We're just a bunch of Swifties here. Mm-hmm. Just girls in the world. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about 1989 Taylor's version today. Angeli. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell me more about the influence of Taylor Swift on your life mm. and her, your general opinions on her. Mm, okay. So I'm going to take you back to a cold, dark time of COVID-19 and you know I'd listened to Taylor Swift here and there I was a big fan of the Lover album which was controversial that was actually when I first got into Taylor Swift and I was like you know what that was pretty good it's a bit of me like you know a bit of bubblegum pop I like it um and then she dropped a little something called Folklore and I feel like the world changed you know I think something shifted in the atmosphere it's the second wave yeah it was a second wave but not of COVID, of Swifty mindset. I think it was a really fun time as well because I really felt like I was part of like this movement, this exciting mm. time where like so much was happening. Oh my god! Yeah, I exciting. found that with yeah. Lover actually a lot because mm. it was like my first big like album release. Right. Of being a Swifty, mm-hmm. like I I remember like seeing all the like her reputation posts and I was like, this mm. is cool. Yeah. I can get with this because I've always admired her ability to parody herself. Mm. Like even when I wasn't a big Swifty, I was like, this yeah. is really clever. Yeah. This is cool. Even if Shake It Off plays mm. too many times, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, no, Lover was my big album, mm-hmm. my big first album release. And yeah. I remember just feeling like so connected to her and mm. so proud of her because she was proud of herself and with the new re-record mm-hmm. what would you say is your new top three okay i don't think i've listened to the new vault tracks enough to say mm-hmm. so you might have to take the lead okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, um i will say i like slut yeah i like the vibe of it but i really like okay i really really like <laughs> the new <laughs> bad blood <laughs> featuring kendrick lamar i think it's so good I'm a massive, massive Kendrick Lamar fan. So yeah. hearing that like new verse from him as well, because I wasn't expecting that. I just thought he'd like re-record his verse, mm-hmm. and like hearing like the new lyrics and stuff, I was like, oh my god, I loved it. And that also, yeah. yeah, also, um, so 1989 to me is a perfect album, except unpopular opinion, I never loved Bad Blood. Like that was like the only I don't like song. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> other than like Shake It Off, because obviously we've heard it a million times. Like Bad Blood was the only one that I would always skip. Um, just because something about it was the only one where I felt like the production was a bit off to me mm. like it just felt very empty like especially the version without Kendrick yeah it felt very empty um, and just kind of odd and I liked that it was unique but it was just didn't work for me with the rest of the album mm-hmm. whereas I felt like this new re-recording with Kendrick was it fixed those problems I had with the production and it felt more mm-hmm. it felt less empty and I think that works better with the song for sure for yeah. sure I think the first like real thought I remember having about this album was how Bad Blood and Welcome to New York mm. her vocals are so much more like mature and stronger mm. now that those songs like actually sound really really good yeah and they match how like the music like mm. the level that the music production was they match yeah. that mm-hmm. um and I remember like listening to Welcome to New York sing- and thinking like, oh my God, I like this song now. <laughs> what? <laughs> I actually agree with you. That wasn't, I forgot. That was also another one I would kind of skip. Yeah. Um, it was like, it felt quite gimmicky sort of. It was like a, okay, like here's the beginning of the album. And like, I do love like the opening. Like, doo, 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 doo. like you know, you're listening to 1999, but I wouldn't actually listen to the whole song. Whereas I agree that was one where I was like, okay, this is like something I would actually listen to now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I definitely got that with the whole album. Mm-hmm. I'd say like her vocals are really strong on those three. Out of the woods, definitely, so good. Um, yeah. and clean. Those were the ones like I noticed. Um, mm-hmm. What jumped out for me was how in I think it was Blank Space and Shake mm-hmm. It Off, her mature vocals don't really fit like the personality of the song anymore. Mm-hmm. So like Blank Space just sounds more generic, right. and Shake It Off doesn't sound as like defiant as it mm-hmm. used to be um even though like the high notes at the end are like yeah. she kills them mm-hmm. she absolutely slays them mm-hmm. dead gone they're beautiful i think this was like the problem with like red i think as well yeah it wasn't i also felt yeah. it with fearless like with you belong with me um i didn't like the re-recording no. i just felt like there's a charm especially to the younger albums but even with nice because she was very young then as well um 
there's something about like her voice at that time that really sometimes makes the song and I feel like especially with the singles where you're probably more likely to have listened to them more mm. I feel like that's when you notice the difference in her vocals now more and then it just feels not always but yeah with sort of um shake it off and things like that and you belong with me and fearless like you notice it in a way that's like oh okay it's not giving the same punch I feel yeah like. yeah definitely I think I had this problem with uh, we are never ever getting back together mm. on red um in that her um, voice had changed so much because the amount of time she spent in the UK mm-hmm. that the more like Americanized pronunciations of like we which are less they aren't as long as say we would pronounce them mm. um, it's more of like a it goes we instead of we right. and so I can't like listen to that song mm. anymore without thinking of Nintendo I think that is the danger of like really so it's yeah. the really small things that like really piss you off about a song that mm-hmm. you will not listen to that song again. Yeah. So how would you like overall rate your opinion of the 1989 re-recording? That's a great question. Mm. That's a fantastic question. I think I would definitely rate it higher, more because like um, the story mm-hmm. of that album I feel like has been told more fully. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that was like more complexity to that mm. album than it gave away at first yeah um i really like how the vault tracks add back in the sort of heartbreak that was clearly in there but mm. wasn't being shown yeah and it creates like a fuller picture mm-hmm. of what it was like to be like young and trying to like mature in a mm-hmm. new city and like trying to just get over things and be single and happy mm-hmm. um so i would for the old 1989, I would give it a solid like 8 out of 10. Mm-hmm. For the new one, I would probably give it like an 8.5. I think like mm-hmm. it's been elevated like mm-hmm. a bit more. I'd say like, say if it was an album she just released, mm-hmm. like for the first time, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't give it as that high a score. Oh really? Because I, even though it tells a really full story mm-hmm. with like the vault tracks included, mm-hmm. that cohesiveness like mm-hmm. that it was, in the old version Mm. was definitely like it felt more like an album okay then again what makes a good album (laughs) Uh, okay i'd say for me i'd give the original 1989 a 9.5 nice to me it's like almost perfect except for the issues i said where like bad blood and like welcome to new york they felt a bit like "Mm, okay i'll listen to it but don't love Mm -hmm. the new re-recording okay i don't know i feel like i'd also give it a 9.5 um because they both give me different things Mm -hmm. like i like that it improves on the problems i had with the original 1989 um but i wouldn't rate it higher just because i like the vault tracks but i feel like to me so for me for you like it completes the picture right yeah to me it kind of feels a bit out of place and maybe that's just because mm. i'm so used to the original 1989 for me like the vibe of the vault track songs even though i like the songs i don't feel like they fit into my perception of what the 1989 story is about yeah, yeah. it's a completely new face she's given the yeah. album mm-hmm. like it's no longer like polaroids and mm-hmm. industrial new york Mm-hmm. Um, it's like waves and like yeah the sort of stuff that was like at the end of the 1989 mm-hmm. era yeah. like with Carly Kloss mm-hmm. and like um, walking across the beach with Tom Hiddleston yeah. and stuff like that sort of aesthetic mm-hmm. she's made the whole thing that aesthetic yeah um, and it works for me like mm-hmm. with that aesthetic but also you have the sort of industrial grunge and mm-hmm. exploring the tourist attractions in New York mm-hmm. that I think is an important part of it. Mm-hmm. It could be cool to like have started the branding like in the city and mm-hmm. then as like the branding and marketing went on, mm-hmm. just like going out more to the suburbs That's and then cool. going out to the beach and yeah. the waves. Mm-hmm. It feels like that would have been a fuller picture. Yeah. Even a fuller picture of New York. Probably. Yeah, I think that's such a good point because I feel like to me, the way they were promoting the new Taylor's version, I was quite confused because I was like, oh, oh, I get the seagulls. It's like reference like her, the jumper she was wearing, mm-hmm. 
But I was kind of like, but that to me doesn't scream 1989. Yeah. To me, I think of, yeah, New York. I think of like industrial city. Mm-hmm. I think of like, you know, single New York girl, like walking with her friends and like having catty fights with people. Like, and I get why they push it that way because yeah, the vault tracks are very much that vibe, mm-hmm. but this is still 1989. Like I feel yeah. like they needed some sort of way to include that. And I feel like, was it the last vault track felt slightly more 1989 to me one of them felt slightly more 1989 to me but the rest definitely kind of felt like um they kind of felt like a bit of a continuation of midnights yeah i felt that i felt like because i know she wrote the songs before i know they weren't written now but it was like why does this sound a bit like midnight's vibe as well i just wish there was more range within the vault tracks i think that's what um i was slightly like disappointed by it i think it would have been nice if each vault track or a few of them told like all a few of more of the sides of for sure yeah. i really wanted slot to have like a yeah. vigilante shit yeah. i really wanted that sort of like edgy blank space mm-hmm. reputation yeah. sort of vibe I wanted, like one it. more song like that i needed one <laughs> more was, yeah and it was like sure great song mm-hmm. relatable been yeah. there done that but also i just wanted her to complain yeah just complain man. i just want to i want her to be fully back in her pop era again like real pop girl era just like i just need that it. right now so. yeah for real yeah. like an anthem love that that's yeah. what like bejeweled gives us all and yeah. anti-hero has given yeah. us all that's mm-hmm. probably why like we're trying to make like the connection between midnights and this mm-hmm. like they're very similar yeah um in a lot of ways how are you thinking about reputation and debut okay so debut I've never listened to debut Mm -hmm. and I've kept it that way so that when she does release the re-recording um I will it will feel like a whole brand new album love so I know like Tim McGraw I know Pictures of Van but other than that I'm pretty sure I don't know any of the other songs and I think that's exciting because I feel like with 1989 obviously I'm going to be listening to this new Taylor's version like a few times but because I've listened to the album so many times it's not going to be as exciting as when Fearless re-recording first came out and I still hadn't listened to it that many times because I was still quite new to being Swifty. Yeah. And it was so exciting because there was all these brand new songs and the original songs were also new to me. Mm-hmm. And so I want that feeling back. Yeah. Um, so I'm ready for, yeah. The Absolutely. OG. And then for Reputation, I'm excited because I like Reputation, but I also, to me, it's not a perfect album. So I'm excited to see if she can make it better. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's more she can improve on there. Whereas for like 1989, it's hard to live up to that. I want to see how much an influence that her touring has on how Look What You Made Me Do sounds. Because mm. Look What You Made Me Do sounds so much better on tour. Yeah. Like the guitars, mm-hmm. the drums, the bridge is like looped for a bit. Mm-hmm. Sounds amazing. But on the album, it's like, it's great. It's a yeah. bit like Bad Blood, actually. Yeah. It's great, like, on the album in its own thing, but it has so many it's, dimensions it yeah. can give. And I, I want those dimensions reflected because yeah. she brings out her full Disney villain mm. yeah. in it, and I love it. Mm. I feel the same with Ready For It as well. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those two songs give me similar vibes, and I, I love them. Absolutely. But yeah, I think they. Yeah, I think she can make them even better. She can. Mm. I'm really excited to see the Reputation Vault tracks. I yeah, said this. I think there could be yeah. some really good ones. Absolutely. Yeah. I said this about 1989. Mm. I was like, oh, they're gonna be great, and then they turned out more like wistful yeah. and like less punchy than I wanted them. Mm. But I feel like Reputation has got to have. Yeah. Also, debut weirdly because some of her mm. unreleased like tracks, mm. like I Heart Question Mark, mm. bangers. Mm-hmm. absolute bangers mm-hmm. love those songs so yeah. much and it's it's fully like taylor in her revenge era yeah. and gives no shits it's like beyond speak now's taylor speak now taylor's like level of revenge yeah it's so beautiful mm-hmm. so i'm really like excited for these yeah. next two albums like also i just remembered our song is that on that debut, song debut yeah. that is one of my favorite taylor swift songs of all time oh my god so i'm so excited to hear her re-recording <laughs> of that like i think that's gonna be so good but i'm wondering like is she gonna do the country accent? No. She didn't do it on Fearless. Yeah. She didn't do it on Speak Now. But I feel like even on like Fearless Speak Now, like she still had the country accent, but it was less pronounced. Whereas mm-hmm. Debbie was very strong. So I feel like even like if you know Debbie very well, it's still gonna feel like a new album because 
her doing it in like her like current accent yeah. is going to change it a lot. It really is. Yeah. I'm excited to see what it brings to it. Yeah. I feel like it might just feel like a big acoustic set. Yeah. But maybe that's what that we need. That could be nice. Yeah. yeah. Fab. Well, okay. I think that's us. Yeah. Yeah, this okay. was fun. That was fun. I had a lot of fun talking about Taylor Pete. Yeah. Fab. Yay. Thank you.